Okay, dissociation, you know, a very good example of that, and this is part of why the books, the, the Harry Potter series is so um, evolutionary. Uh, Voldemort, if you've ever read those books, Voldemort, uh, when he forms his horcruxes, what is that but dissociation? You see, you form a horcrux by uh, uh, killing, executing somebody volitionally, right? Uh, in a way, it's a shorthand for undergoing trauma, for undergoing a traumatic experience that splits off a part of you. So Voldemort has, has right, has um, dissociated parts of himself into objects, and those, ob and therefore he he cannot be readily killed. Okay. Well, what we do when we dissociate ourselves into aspects, we have. Um, in a sense, uh, we're, we're, um, well, you have to follow those, you have to follow those chords or follow those, um, follow the path or the trail to that dissociated piece. And, and to make that, that person whole again, you bring those aspects back. Those aspects having been out of ordinary consciousness, though, are going to bring back facilities and non-ordinary experiences. Now you open up the door to transpersonal psychology, but, but in reality it's just uh, another way of looking at the path to wholeness. Okay. What we see as mental diseases is, or, or symptoms of illness are really it can be seen as frozen or dissociated parts of ourself that we need to somehow get a grip on, get a handle on, uh, be able to communicate with, be able to um, um, bring back to the it, to some degree of integration um, and uh, higher order functioning just naturally uh, evolves. It's part of our nervous systems. It's part of uh, the planetary ecosystem, uh, and uh, it's part of nature.